Welcome to this Ruminant Science Conversation brought to you by Adiseo. Hello, welcome to today's Adiseo Ruminant Science podcast. I am Olga Averkeva, a Global Category Manager of Mycotoxin Management Program of Adiseo. And today we have with me two experts in mycotoxin uh, field, uh, Antonio Gallo and Yulia Dvorska. Let me introduce them. Uh, Dr. Antonio Gallo is an associate professor in animal nutrition at the Department of Animal Science, Food and Nutrition of Catholic University del Sacro Cuore in Italian Piacenza. His main research topics uh, regard nutritional science, feed and food evaluation, feed and food safety, and modeling um, digestive and metabolic processes in animals. He is author of two book chapters and more than 90 peer-reviewed articles published in international magazines. On uh, 2019 and 2020, he has been included in the world's top uh, 2% scientists list of Stanford University in subfield dairy and animal science. Dr. Yulia Dvorska obtained her master and PhD diplomas in veterinary science in Sumy, a na national agrarian university in Ukraine. And later, she continued working in the same university as associate professor. And during her career uh, of, in university, she developed and organized seminars and scientific meetings on mycotoxin topic and poultry and swine and she participated in a number of scientific publications. Uh, Yulia Antonio, wonderful to have you here today. Now let's uh, take some time and to discuss some uh, mycotoxin issues in uh, transition uh, cow. So the transition period, uh, three weeks before and three weeks after calving, uh, we know that uh, cows can experience more health concerns at any time of the year and um, Dr. Gallo, can you help us to understand why and how that, for example, can mycotoxins affect the dairy cow during transition period and how exactly the transition cow suffers from them? Thank you very much, Olga, for this uh, introduction and uh, to share opinion on this uh, important topic. Uh, before to answer to your specific question, just a brief introduction uh, to mycotoxin. Uh, I think that uh, a lot of people know what mycotoxin are, but just a brief introduction, permit me to do it. Mycotoxin are secondary metabolites that are produced by a lot uh, of uh, molds. Uh, they are characterized by, uh, by being a very wide range uh, of uh, um, uh, molecules uh, and uh, in particular now we know more than 20,000 uh, different mycotoxin and dexo metabolites from fungi even if uh, just six of them uh, are regulated so our attention is mainly focused on uh, this kind of mycotoxin such as aflatoxin, ocratoxin, zeralenone the osinivalenol, T2, A T2 toxin, and herbats. Uh, regarding your question, uh, obviously the transition period uh, is a stressful, a stressful period for the animal because uh, they change diet, uh, they increase uh, the energy requirement, but uh, the dry matter intake is not so high. There are a lot of change in this period, uh, as well as uh, uh, challenges situation for the animal. And uh, there is an impact also of, uh, on immune, immune system of this animal. And all we know uh, that mycotoxin interfere with immune system. So probably this, uh, the effect of mycotoxin will be more hard on transition cows. But unfortunately, we have very few data on this aspect. And uh, surely we have to work to better understand what is the real effect of mycotoxin on transition cow in the next future. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, particularly, which raw materials could be of most of concern or most interest uh, during uh, the transition period for the cow? 
So surely about uh, which kind of uh, raw material can be contaminated uh, and uh, on which we have to put attention and analyze for mycotoxin. Uh, there, is, uh, uh, there are a lot of raw material because, uh, uh, that could be contaminated by mycotoxin because mycotoxigenic fungi can contaminate a lot of cereal, cereal by product, oil, seed, uh, nuts, uh, fruit, uh, a lot of uh, feedstuff. Uh, usually, uh, this is an old classification of uh, uh, molds. Uh, we can expect a contamination by some kind of uh, mycotoxin when uh, there are specific environmental conditions. For example, uh, when the environmental condition during uh, harvest season is hot and dry, we can expect uh, a uh, crop contamination by aspergillus. Uh, so a contamination by, for example, aflatoxin. Instead, in other kind of situation, uh, such as more warm and humid, we can expect the fusarium uh, uh, contamination of crop. So a production of fusarium produces mycotoxin. Uh, this is not so true now, because climate change are... Uh, diversified condition. For example, uh, I am from Italy, in Po Valley, uh, the year can be one year hot, one year warm. So we can expect uh, the fusarium contamination the one year and uh, aspergillus contamination uh, another year. Uh, this uh, um, to suggest you that uh, all these raw material can can be contaminated, for example, corn one year by aflatoxin, another year for fumonisin and fusa other fusarium producer toxin. Anyway, I would uh, uh, highlight a topic uh, that for me is of very interest uh, with regard to mycotoxin contamination. Uh, of feed and is the contamination mycotoxin of forage, silage in particular. Sometimes mycotoxin uh, can contaminate uh, the uh, pre insilated crops. Sometimes this mycotoxin can contaminate crops after, after harvest. So mm -hmm. this is a novel area of research for us. Thank you. Um... You have mentioned that uh, cow in transition is uh, quite sensitive, but do you have any any hypothesis uh, why uh, dairy cow are particularly sensitive to mycotoxins? Through which channels? How it happens? Uh, because normally we hear that um, ruminants are less sensitive to mycotoxins, but apparently this statement can be challenged since recent times. My opinion on that uh, is uh, that uh, surely my ruminants can be considered, as, considered less susceptible to mycotoxin than, for example, monogastric human. Mainly because uh, ruminants have the ruminant environment that can protect ruminants by adverse effect of uh, mycotoxin. I remember a very interesting review that was published in 2008 by Hannah Fingremers, in which uh, she presented uh, the effect of uh, rumen uh, environmental microbiota on uh, specific mycotoxin. Uh, Johanna affirmed that uh, some mycotoxin can be uh, completely degraded uh, in rumen environment after ingestion contaminated feed. This is the sample of a Ocratoxin. But for other toxin, mycotoxin, this is not true. For example, aflatoxin. Uh, the uh, rumen can detoxify partially the modern molecule of aflatoxin, aflatoxin B1, in less toxin compound aflatoxical, that is similar as uh, toxic effect to modern molecular, or aflatoxin one. For other mycotoxins, such as fumonisin, there is no effect. They can pass the rumen unchanged. And uh, another strange case is uh, the zearalenone. For the zearalenone, uh, there is a conversion in alpha zearalenone. 
that is four times more estrogenic than water molecular. So we have to rethink uh, the real effect of human in safeguard the toxic effect of animal. What is sure is that the ruminant diet are much more diversified with respect to monogastric diet, for example. What means that uh, for ruminant we use uh, fibrous byproduct, uh, cereal byproduct, uh, and forage. And as I told you before, the forage uh, can be contaminated by a huge number of uh, new, I can define it, emerging mycotoxin as well as their masked form. So we have to study this aspect also for contamination of forage. Mm -hmm. So if I can conclude that uh, ochratoxin, it would be probably less of importance for uh, adult dairy cow and uh, other mycotoxins like aflatoxins, they are really known for monizins, uh, could be uh, um, quite dangerous. Uh, do you agree on that? And any other mycotoxins of concern right now you can name? Okay, I agree that uh, ochratoxin usually is not considered a problem uh, for humans. Uh, aflatoxin can be a problem, uh, but uh, uh, the legal limit uh, of aflatoxin uh, in raw material, a complete feed stuff, uh, can safeguard ruminant health uh, because uh, for aflatoxin uh, there are very low limits uh, that preserve uh, the human health more than ruminant health. Instead, uh, we have to uh, rethink our study the safe level for other kind of um, toxin. For example, uh, two years ago, uh, we published with my research group a paper in which we fed uh, dairy cow with very low level of uh, both the osinivalenol and fumonisin. Uh, the contamination level in uh, mycotoxin contaminated diet was a approximately 1 ppm of Don and 1 ppm as the sum of fomonisin B1 and fomonisin B2. As a result of this uh, um, experiment that was published on Journal Daily Science, we verify a huge effect on dairy cow performance. So uh, we have still to study what are the real dose at which this kind of mycotoxin can cause an effect on uh, ruminants. Mm. Okay. Um, what the, this information that you say now, uh, it's a little bit um, the same that there was found by researchers uh, uh, in North Carolina University in the US. And moreover, the, the, they observed that apparently uh, feeding the cow in her transition period with the diet contaminated with low or medium uh, fusarium mycotoxin levels can apparently affect the lactation curve later on and can influence future milk fat co concentrations. Um, do you, can you say anything uh, about this? What is your opinion on that? The, unfortunately, I don't read this paper, but uh, as you present for me this result, I can't believe that. Uh, sure, if there is a disease, in particular during transition, it's possible that it is an effect, an effect uh, along the wall lactation curve. And what uh, I found very interesting is uh, the direct effect of uh, fusarium producer mycotoxin on milk quality. Uh, I observe very similar result in our trial. Uh, what I reported uh, before. In particular, what I observed is that the uh, mycotoxin uh, interact and uh, influence the milk quality, in particular regarding the rennet coagulation property. Uh, and for me, this is very important result. Surely we have to confirm it uh, with other trial. Uh, because this is very important uh, for the whole uh, dairy supply chain and cheese production too. Uh, thank you. Um, 
another observation, uh, it's known that rumen microbiota can inactivate some mycotoxins. But the question is, on another side, uh, if mycotoxins are fed uh, to the cow for a long time, is it possible to expect uh, some shift or alteration of rumen microbiota caused by mycotoxins? Uh, about this, uh, I am sure. I did a lot of trial on this aspect, uh, and uh, on my previous published paper, uh, I verify as uh, um, mycotoxin from fusarium again, the osinivalenol and fumonaisin uh, interfere with the rumen microbiota by reducing uh, its ability to ferment organic matter. So decreased ability to this rumen fluid. I carried out this trial with uh, uh, in vitro rumen based method, not in vivo, but I verified this condition also in vitro uh, by, by adopting lab scale trial. And I verified this aspect. This is true also. Uh, I verified this aspect also with other kind of mycotoxin that are mainly produced by penicillium stray. I refer to Roquefort in C and mycophenolic acid. Uh, I verified this condition. So surely there is uh, an effect of mycotoxin. They are uh, antibiotic simil molecular on rumen microbiota. And uh, another aspect on which we, for me, we have still to work to better understand what is the real effect uh, of uh, uh, mycotoxin or better uh, detoxification uh, uh, pathway are the role of protozoa in the rumen. Uh, we know that protozoa are able to detoxify mycotoxin, but we are still to understand better what are uh, the, the process and uh, why this happen and if uh, this is uh, ever true. So we have to work on this aspect here. That probably explains why, um, for example, fat um, percentage in milk can be uh, uh, reduced uh, if cow is fed by fusarium or penicillin mycotoxins. So that if they're toxic to microflora, it could be one of the uh, of hypotheses why uh, fat milk fat is affected by contaminated diets. Um, Antonio, I think now it's a, it's a time to ask about. Um, what could be the mitigation strategies and the best practices that can be used to limit the, uh, the mycotoxin risk in dairy cows, especially in transition period? What is your expert opinion on that? What you could recommend to dairy farmers, uh, milk producers? When uh, I discuss uh, this aspect with dairy farmer, I firstly suggest uh, you have to adopt the best practice on crop to avoid that crop on field. Uh, are in a uh, stressful condition. Uh, so to avoid that uh, uh, molds can contaminate uh, this, cro this crop on field. Uh, another aspect should be to monitor uh, the feed for the, the contamination level of different uh, uh, mycotoxin uh, and uh, to repeat this process more than one time in a year, it should be routinely analyzed. Obviously, is, uh, if there is uh, a, a feedstuff that is contaminated by mycotoxin, uh, we can uh, all exclude the batch that we are using, for example, a cereal. Or if the problem is related to forage, I think to silage in a bunker, uh, we should use uh, mycotoxin deactivated product. Uh, we now have a lot of uh, uh, tested uh, uh, products that are very effective uh, in counteracting, counteracting negative effect of mycotoxin. This could be a practical solution for dairy farm. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gallo. And um, that leads us nicely to the attractive line of uh, mycotoxin management solutions uh, or products from Adicio. And my next question is to uh, Dr. Yulia Dvorska. Yulia, how Adicio can contribute to a successful mycotoxin management in dairy cow? 
Um, thank you, Olga. Uh, in this year, we have a holistic approach to um, mycotoxin management. We have program, so-called MycoMan program, which stands for Myco Mycotoxin Man Management. So this program uh, has uh, four main steps. First step is forecasting of raw material contamination. We believe that when, then when we know the contamination level, we can avoid some negative effect. So for that, we have two tools available for our customers. First is MycoMan Predict prediction tool in uh, collaboration with Syngenta. So we have this prediction model and may predict level of contamination for wheat and corn in Europe for uh, two to four weeks before the harvest. So it's allow our customers to have this information before harvesting the, the um, corn or wheat and to have the necessary, um, to have the necessary uh, decision. Second, we have MycoMan uh, Harvest Bulletin. After the harvest, we uh, analyze samples and uh, have this report to can get this report to our customers. So again, they have this information before and they may may have the important decision of how to use this uh, this grain to feed it to calves or to dairy cows or better to to make it uh, feed for poultry, for example. Uh, next steps, we believe it's very important to have a secure storage. So we are um, trying to help our customers to keep storage condition as good as possible. Uh, we have uh, step number three is uh, finish, um, analyzing the fi finished feed. Since, uh, as Antonio mentioned, all raw material can be contaminated with mycotoxins. And as a result, we have the mix on different uh, different mycotoxin and different levels so to understand the risk for our for our cows we analyze the final feed of, of uh, from, from our customers sending to the best labs in the world to have the, all the profile of mycotoxins and then we assess the risk using um, application for the mobile phone um, called mycoman app so we put the level of contamination and get the risk risk assessment for special groups of animals for cows or for hyphers or for dairy cows for example and then we have the um, recommendation of the products for which situation for this situation meaning that we may avoid unnecessary cost we have a precise level of the products which should decrease negative effect of of this level of mycotoxins for example special mycotoxin for special group of animals so this holistic approach we believe should be applied uh, in order to decrease negative effect of mycotoxins thank you a comprehensive approach of ADCO, so four steps. And um, in case um, cow is exposed to mycotoxins, so there is contaminated feed and cow is already suffering, what ADCO uh, can do, how ADCO, uh, which solutions ADCO can offer to the customer to minimize or even protect the cow from uh, mycotoxins? In the DCL, we believe that the complex approach, complex strategy, again, should be applied if we have mycotoxins in the feed of, of cows. Um, in our products, we have uh, five modes of action, uh, starting from a binding, and then we have bioinactivation mode of action. Uh, we believe that we also should provide some uh, aid to organs. Um, because as we know that some of some mycotoxins are very fast absorbed to the blood, like aflatoxin B1, it's very fast absorbed, and so it can ex escape binding and goes to the blood and goes to the liver and have damage in the liver. So we believe that we should also provide uh, some protection to organs, like to liver, or if in case of uh, zeralinone to reproductive tract or for GIT to protect organs. And also, as um, Antonio mentioned today, that mycotoxins are, can negatively affect um, uh, immune system and antioxidant system. We know, we all know that uh, mycotoxins, one of the mechanism of action of mycotoxin is oxidative stress. They may act as free radicals. So they, uh, they damage antioxidant system. So the decrease level of antioxidants and damage their cells. So uh, in this case, we believe that we should also provide some protection for immune system support, for uh, antioxidant system, for organ protection of organs, 
And the main, or main uh, mode of action is, of course, binding and bioinactivation. Bioinactivation is, uh, uh, we're trying to support natural, natural process which going on in the body, natural process of microbiota, uh, natural bioinactivation by microbiota, by cells of the liver, but cells of the gastrointestinal tract. So in this case, if we have all the complex uh, mode of action, all the complex approach, we may help to decrease negative effect of mycotoxin in dairy cows. Antonio, Yulia, I like your simple and clear and concise uh, explanations to us. Uh, and uh, as we move uh, toward wrapping up this podcast, would either of you have closing thoughts, maybe some take-home messages to our listeners? And, Antonio, you go first. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, thank you very much, Julia. Uh, the three, I think that we can resume, um, we can finish this postcard uh, um, by telling uh, we have to put attention to the animal. We have to avoid uh, stress condition during wall lactation and in particular during transition period. Uh, we have to act on farm, a good check of contamination level of mycotoxin, not restricted just to raw materials, cereals, complete feed stuff. For me, it's very important uh, forage to in particular silage. And obviously, we have, uh, if we have a problem, we can use uh, a mycotoxin deactivated product that uh, is specific for specific mycotoxin. For me, this is the right way. Thank you very much. Okay, and from my side, I would like to add that, um, yeah, as you know, that the problem is, is we have the problem with mycotoxin in ruminant, even if they have rumen and rumen deactivation problem is still there. And at the same time, we now we, we, we have, we have uh, tools to implement on a farm. We have uh, solutions for our animals to help. So just again, as, as it was mentioned, just pay attention to our animals and try to protect them against negative effect of mycotoxins. Thank you. Thank you all of you, uh, Dr. Gallo and Dr. Dvorska, uh, for taking time to join us today. Uh, we've had a quite interesting uh, discussion of how and why mycotoxins uh, get into feeds and uh, about best practices for mycotoxin management. Our listeners are invited to learn more by visiting our website at adicio.com. Thank you. This concludes today's Ruminant Science Conversation brought to you by Adiseo.